Well, I want you to tell these folks a little bit about yourself. That you got some credentials. I want you to let these folks know that we're part of a strong, viable, growing industry, and particularly in Memphis. Uh, touch on the economy, touch on the new convention center, and uh, then take a little Q&A. Can do that. So, um, <clears throat> why is Maisie up here? Anybody want to take a guess? She knows you. She raised her hand. She knows me? No, she, uh, say no. My name. she's not claiming me. So, you're going to make up questions. Okay? Okay. You're going to make up questions based, and it can be the wildest thing, whatever you want, of things that I say. Okay. Okay? Make up whatever you want of what I say okay. as a question. And then we're going to ask them, and if they answer it, then they get one of these. All right. Okay? Yes, so okay. if you're wondering what these are, did Graham come with these? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> so there, these are gift certificates for Sunday brunch for two, dinner for two, capriccios. There's one gift certificate in here for dinner for two in Chez Folie. There's uh, tea in Chez, afternoon tea, which is really great. Uh, and um, so whoever can answer the questions right. So. So you better hope that you know Paisy really well. Uh, and this is your gift. I know you don't eat. You're on a diet, but <laughs> well, I won't do anything until after these cookies are gone. So I'll tell you a little bit about me. Oh, you want me up there? I'm not going to stand up there. So a little bit about me. So uh, I was raised in the Caribbean islands. Uh, my father and my mother were both in the Air Force. My father's a retired colonel, my mother's a retired major. Had a tough childhood. Um, my bedroom was about maybe from a, a little bit past that back wall to the beach, to the ocean. It was really a tough childhood, waking up every morning. And that was your view. Uh, you feel sorry for me? Not yet. Not yet? Um, and uh, so I grew up living in the Caribbean. My parents, uh, my father was really good friends with a guy named Lawrence Rockefeller, and you're all too young to know who he is. Uh, but if you know Rockefeller Center in New York, it's the family that built that hotel, or that building, it's not a hotel. Um, and my father and him became good friends, and they started a hotel company, a small hotel called, company called Rock Resorts in the Caribbean. So I grew up living in five-star, uh, hotels um, and actually when I was in high school I did not want to go into the hotel business I wanted to be a large animal veterinarian uh, and uh, I used to ride a lot I competed in the Pan American Games in open jumping and so I loved horses and so that's what I wanted to do until I spent the summer working for a vet and quickly figured out that I wasn't A, smart enough to be a veterinarian, um, and B, it was really a lot of school and work. Uh, so, you know, I, I was had grown up working in hotels as a kid and liked it, knew I was good at it, so I went into the hotel business. Um, I really started, my very first job was as a dishwasher and uh, kind of moved up through the ranks um, have worked in almost every position in a hotel except for in HR and accounting and engineering. Those are the three areas I've never worked in. Uh, and nor do I have an interest to work in those areas. Um, I've worked around the world. I've worked in Brazil, in Venezuela, Colombia, uh, the Caribbean. I've opened 10 hotels going through this kind of fast because I want to get out of here early to go to the Tigers game. Um, I'm just kidding. Um, I do want to go to the Tigers game. I'm not kidding about that part. Um, but I, I worked throughout uh, the world um, and throughout the United States. Opened 10 hotels. I opened a hotel in the Cayman Islands for Hyatt. Uh, worked for Intercontinental Hotels. Opened uh, the Intercontinental 
in Miami, um, the Intercontinental in New Orleans, uh, the Intercontinental in San Antonio. Uh, then I went to work for Hyatt. Uh, I told you about the Hyatt the Caymans. Uh, opened the Park Hyatt in Washington, D.C. So anyway, uh, worked for Hyatt, um, Intercontinental Hotels, a, a small company called Medallion Hotels for a short while, um, Weston, uh, uh, and, uh, and then after Weston, I worked, went to work for a company called Posadas, Fiesta Americana Hotels in uh, Mexico. I was a regional director. Any of you know Mexico very well? A little bit? Uh, I had the worst region in the company. The company had 82 hotels. I had 14 of them. My region was Veracruz, Jalapa, Merida, Cancun, Cozumel, Iztapa, Acapulco, Puerto Vallarta. That was my region. Those were where I had my hotels. So every week I was traveling to Acapulco, to Cancun, to Cozumel, Puerto Vallarta. Uh, it was, um, so anybody believe that I had the worst region in the company? It was a tourist year. I had the best region uh, in the company. Uh, my 14 hotels, there were 82 hotels in the company. My 14 hotels produced about 80% of the EBITDA of the company. Of the entire company, 14 hotels. Why is that? Because I had all the resort north destinations and they produced the highest amount. Does anybody know what EBITDA is? Uh, to work out. Well, uh, what, income, is that that's kind of a income header. before depreciation taxes and something you got it very close um, so after um, Posadas Fist Americana hotels um, I went to work for um, Peabody hotels I'd actually met Marty Bells a couple years before at a funeral a mutual friend um, and I sat next to Marty during the funeral and we kind of hit it off that night. Uh, there was a dinner and we sat next to each other and we kind of stayed in contact. And two years later, he reached out to me and said, are you interested in moving to Memphis? And I think my response was, hell no. Um, <laughs> and at the time I lived in Mexico, uh, beautiful house, live in Maid, a driver, why would I want to move to Memphis? Why? Uh, yeah. And, yeah, why uh, did you? <laughs> so uh, he said, fly in, let's talk. I, I came, and really, truth be told, and he knows this, um, I really came because I thought I was getting a free trip to the U.S., um, and anytime you can get a free trip back to the U.S., you know, to do shopping and anything I needed, you know, I was going to take advantage of that. As it turned out, I hit it off with the Bells family. Um, they made me an offer I couldn't refuse, and I became general manager 16 years ago. Of 16? 16 years ago. Wow. The Peabody Memphis. I'm the second longest GM the hotel has ever had. The longest general manager the hotel has ever had was a guy named Frank Shutt. And he was the one that started the Duff March and everything. Um, so he is the longest general manager. Um, the closest to me, I think, is around 12 years, so I'm well surpassed uh, them. Uh, anyway, I fell in love with Memphis, uh, the people. I've got great friends here. Uh, I love the city. Uh, and I kind of moved up with it, uh, with, uh, Peabody Hotels uh, about six or seven years ago. I became vice president of the company. I was over there, uh, the, the Peabody Memphis, but then also all of their franchise hotels. At one time, the Bells family was the largest Holiday Inn franchisee, um, and they had a lot of Holiday Inns and Hilton's and uh, Hampton Inns, and so I was over that. And they really wanted those sold off um, and they wanted to really focus on Peabody. Um, unfortunately, I sold them faster than they had thought. We actually sold the hotels, all of them, within about two years. Uh, and then we ended up with the three Peabody's. Um, and then they put me over the Peabody Little Rock. At the time I was vice president, the president was in the hotel in Orlando. And 
um, I quickly realized that we really shouldn't have a Peabody in Little Rock because of the fact that it was a four star, four diamond hotel, it was a luxury hotel. And Little Rock really couldn't sustain the average rate that was needed for a luxury hotel, which is probably in the $250 range and up. And so I went to the family and said, you know, the reality is there is not a full service Marriott in the state of Arkansas. Why don't we make it a full service Marriott? Um, it will do much better. We won't have to have as many costs and uh, payroll won't be as high and everything else if we made it a full service Marriott. Um, and because it was so nicely done, there really wasn't gonna be too much of a pip to be done at Marriott's requirements, at least not in the first few years. Um, as it turned out, a local group here uh, made the Bells family an offer. They sold the hotel. Again, we weren't expecting to sell it. So now we're down to two hotels, which was Orlando and Memphis. Um, and out of the blue, Hyatt made an offer of $720 million for the Peabody in Orlando. And we were not planning on selling that hotel, but it was a lot of money. And how do you say no to $720 million, especially when we didn't think that it was valued at that. Um, so now we sold the Peabody Orlando. The president of, that, of Peabody at that time was in that hotel. Um, Alan and I had actually worked together.